Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Joining us today on the show is legendary North Dakota businessman and entrepreneur, Gary Therosen. And he's here to talk about a new book uh, by Patrick McClowski called Open Secrets of Success, The Gary Therosen Story. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. As we get started uh, off today, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, your background, where you're originally from. Um, I was born and raised in Daisy, North Dakota, and a um, uh, family of six children, and and uh, and I I did what I in the early years I two of the years I I spent uh, living away from home during high school, uh, working on a farm, dairy farm and uh, made, making $50 a month room and board, you know, it was, but I enjoyed every, every, everything I did. I, 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 I'll, that's one thing I've been blessed is that no matter what I do, I totally enjoy it. Okay. And so life has been wonderful. Well, that's a good, uh, a good philosophy to have uh, for, for life. Uh, but tell us a little bit about how Patrick contacted you about even uh, writing the book. <clears throat> well, it's, uh, 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 not Patrick, Mc, not only Patrick, it was Jerome Richter and Monsignor Shea. Uh, uh, the, the School of Business at University of Mary is named after me, mm -hmm. and so they wanted to uh, wanted to be able to provide a book so that the the, the students could see see what how what I did and and how I was able to uh, overcome a lot of obstacles and 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 be. Uh, super successful, mm -hmm. and they thought it was a good lesson for for the for the students. Yeah, with that, you know, you talked a little bit about your upbringing, but how did that really shape you and and get you ready to get on with your life? Well, I, I think the thing is, it's all about North Dakota values, and 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 you, yeah, I work for. Uh, I thought my parents had great North Dakota values, and and the people I work for also. But the, the people, I, farmers were on, are entrepreneurs. And so I, 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 sort of, I got the entrepreneurial bug, I think, at that time. Because uh, one of the guys, Richard Grotberg from w Wimbledon, not only did he farm, but he, he had a business that uh, uh, we were tearing down old buildings. And he would share the information with me and, and, and how well he did. And, and it just always it, it got me excited about going out being able to do something on my own really so so kind of uh, who were your mentors you know as, as you were growing up who did you look up to you know uh, you know I, 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 that's a tough question okay. <laughs> um, I, I think you have a lot of different mentors in, in your in your life but I, I, I always looked up to people you know like you know, as I went on, is like men like Bill Marriott in, in the in the Marriott companies and their values and everything. I always say that when we when we started doing Marriott products, uh, and, and we started creating the same values in our company, that they, it, it really made us super successful. Um, and uh, I think we had a lot of the values, but we we fine tuned them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. What was your career choice before you got into hotel development? Well, I, I was, I was, a, I went to college at Valley City State and to become a teacher, and so I taught school for two years, and you know, making five thousand eight hundred the first year and six thousand three hundred the second year, I, um, uh, I had, I ended up having a summer job in in the insurance business, and uh, uh, you know, between my first year and second year teaching, and. After five weeks, I quit because I couldn't do it. I just, I, you know, I, 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 I failed. But luckily, a branch manager came out to me and said, can I retrain you? And so I, so, and I think this is a big turning point in my life because he retrained me and after I, he got done, I said, if, the, if he can do it, I can do it. And, and it's really all about changing your attitude. And, and, and that, that is, uh, I think the thing is what I, I gained after that. I always had a very positive attitude, and, and you know, it, it, even in bad times, you know, if you have a positive attitude, it's easier to get through things. And as, as I as the book tells, there were some difficult times, 
after I had it, life really made. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've always been taught hire people with a positive attitude uh, that it'll, they'll overcome a lot of things for you. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's not, it's not surprising that your first hotel venture was in Valley City. Can you tell us about that? Well, one, one, uh, uh, one of the gentlemen that worked for me in the insurance business uh, had, had a motel, and so he, he says, well, Valley City's coming up for sale, and he was a real estate agent at that time, so he talked me into to buying that first hotel. And then, he, then Devil's Lake followed fairly closely after that. And, uh, uh, and, and one of the reasons, the, the realtor that in Fargo, by, in, in Valley City, by the name of Lloyd Nelson, he said, well, you, you have to shelter your income if you're, going to, if you're going to get rich. And so there's only three ways to get rich, right? Real estate, uh, 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 stock, or you inherit it. And I knew I wasn't going to inherit it. So uh, what, what, I, what, I, uh, what I did is I chose real estate because of the depreciation and amortization because you never can get rich by earning an income because the government will take too much of it away. <laughs> well, with that said, uh, it sounded like it was sort of a business opportunity because really my question is why the hotel industry? I mean, you started out being a teacher. Uh, you went into some insurance selling for a little while. So was it the hotel industry just sort of an opportunity or was it a passion that was linger, you know, starting off or what was it? And when it first started, I, I, I was more all about real estate. I used to fix mm -hmm. up houses up and resell them and stuff like that there. But the thing, is, when, when the motel business came along, it was the exciting times for Super 8 motels at that time in, in the late 70s. And, and so just uh, the enthusiasm around that product and, and, you know, because I was in the insurance business, I stayed in a lot of Super 8s. So I, I, I sort of understood how they were operated, and, and, and uh, the, the, but the big thing at that time was um, in all the furniture, fixtures, and equipment you bought, you got in income investment tax credits. So I was able to wipe, wipe out a lot of my insurance uh, ta income taxes by having uh, by, by building motels hmm. in the early 80s. Sure, sure. So I, I was going to ask what year what year was that when you started with Valley City and Devil's Lake? And yeah, 1982. 82. Yeah. Uh, talk about some. I understand you sort of dove into the business really without any real partners, and that's sort of unusual. Usually, yeah. real estate groups get together, and it's a group of investors. Yeah, I actually built the first 390 without a partner. Wow. That, that's, that's probably the most amazing part of this whole story is, is being able to accomplish that without any partners. And, uh, um, in, in, in the, in, I, the thing is I was able to build them with, I, I created a strategy that I could build them and they'd be profitable within the second or third month. And so that they, they became uh, and, and the banks were a little more liberal back in those days where, the, where they would, today the banks are, 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 have so many rules that you, you, I don't, you couldn't repeat what I did, I don't think. Okay. I wondered about that because I'm thinking, man, this, yeah, this is something we all need to do. No. Uh, when did you know you really had something special? Um, it was about 87 when I... I sold the first group of motels and I made $5 million. In the 80s, $5 million was a lot of money. Today it doesn't seem like that, but, but uh, it, it is to most people. But in our business and what I've been trying to do now, it, it wasn't, yeah. I think that was a real, the real, because you can build them and operate them and we were making money, but the thing is when you're able to sell them at that kind of a profit, uh, it was, it really was, the thing that made me want to continue to go on building more, more and more motels. Yeah, just, just uh, you, you had a formula was working. It sounded like. Yeah. But can, can you tell the folks about uh, your your hotel empire and how vast it is? Well, okay, uh, we've had a, basically three of them. <laughs> the first, uh, 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 so far, I built about 450 motels, but the first. Uh, group of motels, which is 214 motels, I sold them to the employees under an employee stock ownership plan. 
and um, that the employees were able to they turned around and sold them in 2014 19 years later they they walked away with 600 million dollars mm -hmm. 90 millionaires in that group another 300 that had over 500 thousand dollars but the ones I liked the most in in that group was there was housekeepers if you were a housekeeper and you started in in you were there in 99 and you were there when it was sold it was about 180,000 and the thing is housekeepers the money they made there was no way they could save a penny and so uh, for them it was they'd come up to me after they got their final payment, you know, they couldn't even talk. They, they, they'd start crying because they felt so happy about what happened to them. And, and so I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> now, when you say you're going to do it again, what does that mean? Well, um, we're, we're in the process right now of building another fortune <laughs> or a, a, a group of a couple, hundred or more motels in, in the... I'm, I'm creating a, another ESOP right now so that all, of, all the employees that will be working with me will have a chance to have a very, very nice retirement in the future. Mm -hmm. Now your company uh, was called TMI. And you know, you got a TMI, well you had a TMI too? TMI too, it, yeah, Thurlson Motels Incorporated, yeah, and we just short, is mm -hmm. TMI, uh, yeah. And understand now you'll have a TMI three. Yes. Is <laughs> that okay? Well, so how many employees do you have currently? Uh, it's around 1,100. Oh. In, in, and we'll go to uh, within four years, that should be around 3,500 with our growth. We have in the pipeline, we have 61. We have 40 that are uh, open by June, and then we'll, we'll, op we'll have over 100 properties uh, within four years. And uh, um, and then uh, that, at that time, we need about uh, uh, 3,500 employees. With all these uh, properties that you keep mentioning, where are they? I mean, where are they? Where are they, where are they all built? The, the first portfolio was, was in about 38 different states. And, 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 and so the, the, the new portfolio that we're building now is in, in either the, the, the southwest or the northeast, basically, or or in some major cities like Denver, San Antonio. Uh, I want to be in hard barriers to entry where, where when you go in, you know that that, that uh, motel can be successful for, I, I, I say, 40 years. Because if you put them in the right places, and I think our strategic plan is, is to make sure that we put them in places where they will still be successful 40 years from today. Hmm. Yeah. With that, uh, when, when I think of hotels, of course, there's all different sizes. Uh, I think you mentioned mot motel uh, eight or six or whatever it was. And, and uh, but, but how many rooms do you normally have in, in your hotels, or does it range? Uh, ob obviously, because of how we, I, I started with little or no money. I had to build small motels, right? And, and so the Valley City was 30 rooms. Mm -hmm. Devil's Lake was 39. And so our average size in that portfolio I sold TMI was around 70 rooms. Mm -hmm. Today our average size is about 110 rooms. And uh, the, the makeup of the motels are uh, different. Today I'm doing mostly uh, uh, extended stay, residence in, Homewood Suites, uh, and, and with the major companies. You always want to be with the best companies, right? Because they're going to produ produce the best results. Mm -hmm. and, well, and maybe I was about to ask you, what are your open secrets of success? The name of your book. What What are your secrets of success? Well, I think I think I, I sort of mentioned it in a way. Uh, first, you got to be with the best companies mm -hmm. and and with the best brands within that in within that company. And we think the extended stay brand produces the highest highest income. So we that that and so uh, and, and then then you go to markets that are markets that are hard barriers to entry. I think if people would just follow the, that model, uh, and, and, um, and, and so we sometimes, what we do, 35 of, our, of the 60 properties we have in development is, are in California. Very, very difficult state to operate in. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you can do it, 
you don't have people coming in from behind behind you and building in 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 the thing is the state is is uh, the supply is low on on motels mm -hmm. so it's um yes sir it, well, it sounds like your values are, are important for your company and taking care of your employees. Uh, can you talk about a retirement plan you set up for your employees and, and how that works? Okay. The, the, we call it, it, it's an employee stock ownership plan. And, and so uh, what I did uh, the first time was I, I sold them one of my companies that had 214 motels. In. They owned it. When I say I sold it to them, they never paid one penny out of their own money. It was only from the profits that that company made, so so they so they didn't have to. And the reason I did it is because they they, they used to I used to have a 401k, but most people became frustrated in trying to invest in it, in, in stocks and stuff, and they didn't know anything about it. And so I I felt that that most of them were were market goes up, market goes down, and when the market goes down, they're sad, and when the market goes up, they're happy, right? Well, I I I I found that if I did an employee stock ownership plan, and and, and I knew what it was going to pretty well produce, they were going to be happy all the time, and so uh, uh, that that's uh, what I did. Okay, but of course, like it did uh, many. Uh, the 2008-2009 recession hit hit folks hard. You know, uh, can you explain what happened with your organization during that? Uh, if you take the motel organization, uh, we 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 dropped a little bit, but mm -hmm. we still did pretty well. I mean, we were very, we were still successful in hard time. The reason is 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 again, it's strategy. What what you try to do is. I try to stay in the market. I don't want to be in full service, and I don't want to be in the lower level. And what happens in good times, uh, they trade up to, to where our brands are. In bad times, they trade down from full service to mine. So we, we retain our occupancy do, during the bad times. And that's how we're, we're geared for uh, uh, the, this future portfolio also. Hmm. Do you ever see yourself uh, fully retiring? No. I, I'm having too much fun, and uh, uh, it's my hobby. I, I totally love what I do. Not only that, I love the, I love how the, the my employees react to me, and I, I just think it gives me such great feeling. And, and to me, all I have to say, well, this is what we want to do, and they take the, they take, they they actually go out and do everything, and they're excited about doing, and they're they're having fun doing. Uh, it's fun being with a growing company. You know, uh, and so I never retire. Okay. What well, can you talk about the Theros and uh, ethanol? Sure. Okay. okay. We the Theros and ethanol plant is uh, up, uh, twenty mi little over twenty miles west west of Fargo, and uh, it's uh, uh, the fifth largest ethanol plant in the nation. And right now, we pr we'll produce about one hundred and sixty five million gallons of ethanol. Uh, this year, and and so the, the the reason people use ethanol is to uh, uh, lower the uh, lower the pollution in the air, right? And so uh, I think the demand for ethanol is going to become increasingly greater as the pollution problems continue t continue to increase. Okay, was this when did you get uh, started investing in that? Well, um, I, I, I was about. 2008, we thought about it when th things were, were still real good, <laughs> and so um, and I had I had just sold a portfolio to Goldman um, uh, Goldman Sachs, so uh, um, and so I had a lot of money, and so what does a kid do with a lot of money? He's going to find something to put do with it, right? Yes, I bought it, put it, built an ethanol plant, mm -hmm. bought a lot of land. All right, sir. Well, let's talk about uh, maybe your book here. I understand there's a best decisions chapter in here. What what is that? What, what's that about? Well, I think the best decisions chapter in there is is all about the ESOP. I, I think that's the best thing I've ever did uh, because it it helped uh, thousands of people, and and uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately it became the worst decision <laughs> from a. Uh, we, there were some uh, not so uh, deceptive lawyers out of 
that used to work for the Department of Labor came back and sued me. And so it tied it up for about 10 years in a lawsuit. And of course, we got through it, and and and, uh, and uh, the, f we could finally sell the company because we had it sold in 2006 too mm -hmm. for the same price we sold it to. It was sold in 2014, but they said I I charged charged them too much. You, I, I, the price was too high, uh, and they made 600 million in 14 in 15 years. Uh, I don't think it was too high. I thought it was. It was too low, really, oh, but yes. I thought it was a great decision that I did it, and it turned out to be hard, hard, hard on me because I, I, I spent a lot of time trying to uh, to handle the legal problems that it created. I mean, yeah, the business empire that you've built. So, what does the future hold for you? For I'll call it the Theroson Empire. What What does the future hold for you? Well, I, th I think what we're doing today is building motels that will last 40 years. And so we think that, you know, uh, we will uh, 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 c continue building the, this portfolio. And after that, we'll, we'll pro we, right now, we'll, we'll do a billion three in development in the next four years. So we'll probably slow it down a little bit as I get a little older. <laughs> but uh, I think we'll always be uh, in the motel business. As Bill Marriott always said, stick to your knitting. If I'd have stuck to just the motel business, I can't imagine what I would have today if I would have just stayed in the motel business. Because there was four or five years that I was sort of unproductive because of bad times. But if, if I would have took that money during the bad times, I mean, we, as you know, prices got pretty cheap then. Yes. We, we could have built and, and uh, uh, had very successful properties. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, I understand that uh, you enjoy talking to college students or, or young business people. Uh, talk about some of that. What do yeah. you tell them? What do you talk about? Well, uh, I, I just tell them my story. I think the thing is, you know, especially here, a lot of, a lot of kids come up, children, or they come, students come up to me afterwards and say, you know, you know, my life, I was, worked on a farm. I'm going to college now. We haven't had a lot. We've Farmers go through ups and downs too, but we don't have it. So I think the thing is, what it does is it it, it shows people that that you can you can be whatever if you can conceive and believe you can achieve almost anything you want to, and and it's so important to let them know that a, a young young boy from Daisy, North Dakota, was able to beat the odds and, and uh, uh, be very successful. And, and the thing is, what I always say, say is, success is really being the best you can be. So if you're gonna be a school teacher, then be the very best you can be. And if you, if you become a businessman, strive to be the very best you can be. And, that, and that, that to me is really about, that's what success is all about, being the best you can be. I uh, we've got a couple more minutes, and that, that was probably about the best wrap-up you could do. But, you know, you made a comment for you, you don't think you could replicate it today. Because, so, is it taking risk and uh, looking for opportunities? Is it, how much is it about timing and then about attitude and passion and, and just working with yeah. it? Yeah, I, I think that one of the things is, is uh, people would, uh, when, I, when I said that, they have to have investors today if they were going to start. Mm -hmm. A, a tickle, typical property we're building now is right around 20 million. Mm -hmm. So, so what happens is is um, per property. So what happens is you have to have six million to seven million dollars in in capital to to be able to to use as equity for that. And then you have to have a reputation. You know, mm -hmm. the the, re, the reason I get it is that the banks love they need they need loans and and and, and, and they want to deal with people who have a, a, a great track record. So that's why I say it, it, it's really hard hard today to get started. Uh, families join together sometimes to with investors in order to get to, to do it to build motels today. Yes, well, Gary, what do you hope people take away from the book when they get a chance to read it? I, I think it's, just, to be honest with you, I think it's just a great story of, of, of how uh, a person can create, have a very positive attitude and where it can get you in life. And, uh, and uh, uh, so 
I think that's the takeaway is just always be positive and be the best you can be in, in I mean, you, you see business people, whatever you can conceive, right, and believe you can achieve. I mean, very simple, uh, keeping that right attitude about things. Absolutely. Well, if people want a copy of the book, uh, where can they go? Who can they contact? Okay. Um, the two places. Uh, it can be buy, bought at the University of Mary Bookstore online or Amazon.com online. Okay. Yeah. Well, Gary, we thank you so much for joining us today. Your story is so interesting, and, of course, your great success. Uh, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding provided by the members of Prairie Public.